All right, next we'll go to uh, Brittany Chapman and Bryce Chapman. I'm here. Sorry, I could not find the meet button. Is Bryce Chapman with us? No, he won't be. I'm going to mute one of these people here. It's not letting me mute it. Just a minute here. All right, Ms. Chapman, um, let me get my notes. Mr. Chapman was here last time, and even though it wasn't the full amount of child support, I required that he pay you at least $500 and provide me a current wage statement. Um, nothing was filed, and did you receive the $500? I have received nothing. Um, and actually, so I asked for half of my daughter's basketball or at least get her basketball shoes or a basketball or even $10 shorts, nothing. Um, and actually come to find out his license gets suspended on the 18th um, because he did not pay a ticket uh, and he didn't show up to court, believe it or not, um, for that either. And so... Um, and he's been paid, I believe, twice in the month and nothing. Um, and I'm struggling over here. <laughs> I'm going to school and still, I mean, it's hard to make it <laughs> with the car payment, the rent, the kids and everything else and no child support since September. These payments not being made for the whole year that they've been ordered. Um, and he barely shows up for visits. Uh, he still smells like alcohol when I do see him. I mean, it's, it's a lot. Um, and he's just not taking things seriously because I think he just thinks that nothing's going to happen. And I'm at the point of just being completely fed up of the no help and toying with his kids' emotions and them not getting the support that they need financially. So I'm over here with nothing and still making sure that they can do the sports and do the things that they've always done. Even if that means it leaves me with a dollar and it's rough. Okay, thank you. He did inform me he was not going to be at court today and wanted me to let you know. <laughs> his excuses of no payments. And I don't feel that's my, my job to do so. All right, I'm looking at your uh, proposed order. I think this might be the fourth contempt or fifth. I don't know. I mean, there's more that I just didn't file because I, I don't know. I'm making some modifications to it. I'll go over with you in a moment. Oh, one more thing. He did actually lie to you about the place of employment. It's actually new legacy, not win-win, um, like he said. The last uh, contempt order I signed uh, covered the period from August to October. I think that was the beginning of October. Um, this... Yeah. Contempt order. Well, um, you've written um, September one, so that was covered in the other one. So we need to go October first. <laughs> like who knows? It's been the entire year. I think in February of last year it was ordered, and there's been no payment since. I mean, ever <laughs> it was ordered. So. I don't know how much that is at this point. So I, I, I'm going to ask you some numbers here in a minute. I'm going to have it go from October 1, 2022 to um, January 31, 
And what is the you? What is the uh, child support amount per month? Um, this one is for the um, spousal support and car payment, and so that's two fifty plus two fifty a month, so five hundred a month. Child support is supposed to be, I think, sixteen hundred a month or eleven hundred a month. I'm not sure because they lowered it for some reason. Well, October, November, December, and that'd be four months. So I'm going to put that at 4,400. Last time we mentioned jail, and I don't want him to go to jail, but at this point, nothing is going, he does not think that there is any repercussions for anything at all. Uh, spousal support is well, 250 a month, is that right? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay, so that's going to be a total for four months is going to be a thousand dollars, and the car payment is two fifty a month. Yeah, so that's another thousand dollars. Okay, this um, contempt order is going to cover the period of October one, twenty twenty two to January thirty one, twenty twenty three. So that's a four month period, and I've taken all those um, monthly amounts and multiplied them by four. If you file a subsequent um, contempt order, then you'll want to start with February 1st, 2023. Okay. I have indicated he can purge the amount he owes by paying uh, $3,000 by February 15th, 2023. I am setting a review hearing for February 15, 2023. And I understand you don't want to send him to jail, but that's the next step. So if uh, the $3,000 is At not this paid, point. if it's not paid by February 15th, then I am going to order jail time at that point. Uh, this is, I believe this is the fourth contempt order I've signed this year. Mm -hmm. And Last time, as I indicated, Mr. Chapman indicated he would make a $500 payment and he had just started a job and he was going to give me information about how much he was earning. And he's done none of that. So um, at this point, um, he gets one last chance. Um, otherwise, I will order jail time. Okay. And I have one quick question um regarding his suspended license um which has nothing to do with this so i'm not sure if you can go on to that but what do i do about that do i allow the children to go to visits until that's resolved like i i don't know do i need to file something it's typical that if a parent drives a child they have to have um a valid driver's license and insurance. So if he doesn't have a valid driver's license, he can't drive the children. Um, I don't know that it changes um, visitation if he can arrange some other way to yeah. have them transported. Uh, but if he can't, then uh, that probably does affect it, Kim. That's what I was thinking, okay. Okay. And if you believe the court should make a change in the current uh, visitation plan, then you can make a motion to that effect. Okay. I, I feel like it's necessary, but I just don't want to go down all that again. <laughs> okay. uh, all right. I've signed that contempt order and we'll see you back here in two weeks. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Um, there's two things before the court. One is uh, a child support order that's been provided by Ms. Looney. And then um, the other is, um, I believe, a motion for contempt um, that was filed by Ms. Anschutz. And so why don't we take the child support order uh, information uh, first, and then uh, we'll go to the contempt order. Ms. Looney, do you want to go first? 
Thank you, Honor. Um, would you like me to go through the numbers on the order, or would you like just to go from from there? I can go through everything. So this would require Ms. Anschutz to pay $910 a month. Is that right? Yes, Your Honor, which would break down to $303 and um, I think 33 cents per child per month. Um, Ms. Anschutz, any comment on the request for child support? Uh, yes, Your Honor. I am only working 10 hours a week currently and there's no way that I can afford to pay that. Ms. Looney, what um, are these numbers based on uh, last year's earnings? Um, Your Honor, we had, at the time of drafting, we had the um, employment security data for 2022 quarters one, two, and three. Um, those are the numbers that we based this off of. And we did impute both parents working at full-time hours at their current rate of pay at that time, um, according to 2619071. Um, so we do have them at full-time as we don't have any information stating that neither of them are capable or able to work at full-time hours. And we also did request past due support for the TANF period, which was September and October of 2022. And we did calculate that at $50 per child per month. So that is set for $300 as the request of the state. Um, so that's what we were basing those numbers off of. And we have a net income for Ms. Anschutz of $26.88 per month and for Mr. Anschutz of $26.44. Their incomes are fairly comparable. Your Honor, um, Go ahead. there information they have me it working 40 hours a week at $20 an hour I was only working part-time mm -hmm. last year and I haven't made $20 an hour in any job that I have and for the whole September October charging me child support I had the kids the majority of the time and it was still split custody like he didn't have them full-time so I don't understand why I have to pay when I had the kids half the month of September and October. Have you provided your current earning uh, statements to the Division of Child Support? I haven't, but I can and am willing to provide it. I've only received like their printouts and they haven't that I know have requested for me to provide those, but I am willing to. Ms. Looney, I think I'd like you to um, at least see what um, Ms. Anschutz provides and see if that um, makes any difference with the calculation. So if you could provide income information, say going back to last November, let's say November, December, and January. Um, so Ms. Looney can consider that. Yes, Your Honor, I can. Okay. And can we set a review date for this, Your Honor, um, just to ensure that we get that information in a timely manner so we can, can take a, a chance to consider it? I was thinking of February 15th. Will that be sufficient? Can you um, get that information? Go ahead. It, it may, um, for service purposes, it may be a little tight. So if we could do the 22nd, just to make sure, sure. that we have time to receive the information consider it. And if we need to send out new proposed orders, I would give us time to serve both parents. Okay. So let's make it uh, February 22nd. Thank you. Okay. Jack, that's on the child support issue. Okay. And then provide the income from November 22 to January 23, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. There was a motion for a contempt uh, filed by Ms. Anschutz, and it lists a number of times uh, when Mr. Anschutz both did not take the kids or deliver the kids. And so, Ms. Anschutz, do you want to address uh, your motion for contempt, and then I'll uh, give Mr. Anschutz a chance to respond, and then we'll hear from Ms. Fellows if, if she wants to weigh in. Okay, go ahead. Yes, Your Honor. I filed contempt against Ken, one being placing Camden in the Kelso School District after he was already enrolled in Longview, the same school district my older two children have always been and still are. 
I have proof Camden was enrolled in Longview and can provide to the court. Ken broke our parenting plan purposely to hurt me as he knew I couldn't accommodate transportation to Kelso. No different than all the other controlling behaviors and abuse I dealt with, such as spending the night in the hospital from his past and present violence towards me and the children. I provided all the evidence that is in the guardian ad litem's possession and the courts as well. The children were taken from me because I couldn't get Camden to school in Kelso, which I did not break any laws as Camden is not legally required to go at the age of five. Ken, however, did break the law after having an agreement with me and Camden being in and going to school in Longview. Ken broke the law and was rewarded the children. And he also has 21 violations with an extensive violent history, including felonies in prison time, in which the guardian ad litem is aware of and has failed to mention. I asked the court to review Ken's violent history and criminal record today and that the guardian ad litem has in her possession. I ask that primary custody be awarded to me and the court to recognize with evidence I have provided in court and to the guardian ad litem that the children are being detrimentally harmed as a judge who reviews my motion to relocate with the children back in September acknowledged and said Ken's actions were that detrimental. Ken also has the older two children write letters which he submitted into the court saying they didn't like me and they never want to be with me. Ken also has our children telling the guardian ad litem they want to live with him, although evidence provided showing Ken didn't want to see nor did not take Matthew. I had Matthew for four months with no visits between him, him and Ken. I knew for a fact that there's no way Matthew would say he wants to live with his dad. Matthew's words are out of fear, knowing Ken has put his hands on Matthew and that I have very recent texts from Ken's girlfriend's sister concerned about child abuse and abuse to his current girlfriend. The guardian ad litem has all this as well. The fact that the guardian ad litem ignored all of this and focused on rewarding an abusive criminal for contempt of parenting concerns me, and I truly believe my children are in direct harm due to the negligence of the guardian ad litem. I ask that Beth Fellows be that is assigned to our case be removed and that the court to review all concerns combined with evidence I have already provided filed back in September. I would also like to bring up there are 10 declarations submitted into court that were used in the frivolous restraining order back in October that Ken filed against me. That shows the character of Ken and shows I have always been the primary caregiver attending to my children. Ken has failed already at getting the children to doctors and dental appointments, which can be proved. Ken removed Matthew from his ADHD medication against doctor's advice and without discussing it with me, a violation of our parenting plan that was in effect at the time with joint decision-making. Because of this and Ken's actions, Matthew is now failing three out of six classes, and according to his teachers, he has attention and behavior issues, something Ken does not know as he doesn't attend parent-teacher conferences, something that I've always done. Technically, a fifth contempt of court. And lastly, I would like to bring up parental interference during my time, not only on Ken, but his girlfriend as well. On October 26th, uh, Ken's girlfriend called Ari Long, where Matthew attends, impersonating myself, inquiring on if Matthew was at school, then trying to get his excused absence unexcused. This happening after I had informed school that Matthew was at home ill. I have records showing from, the, from school of this. The school had called me out of concern, which is how I found out of the incident. There is also record of me reporting impersonation to the Cowles County Sheriff's Office, as well as Ken's girlfriend admitting in court on November 4th of her impersonating myself. Ken has parental interference during my time with, with when I have my children, which has been filed as evidence in our case filed back in September. Also with my original filing in September, I also brought up Ken has had an alcohol problem that also goes along with his criminal violence and he has been ordered to in the past to complete alcohol treatment that he did not complete. And on Monday this week, I attended Hannah's IEP meeting at school, which Ken did not attend. I, like I've mentioned before, Ken has never participated in schooling or appointments before with our children. And Hannah's IEP is very important part of her schooling and extremely important for parents to be involved in which another reason Ken should not be primary parent. I was also informed on Monday from Hannah's teachers 
that she was transferring to the Kelso school and that the guardian ad litem was aware of that and encourages when I filed to move with the children she was against due to the children having to change schools when I filed to move back in October. Why is that okay now? When, when are we going to stop involving my kids in court when we know they are saying things children wouldn't normally say and is being influenced by their dad, which is detrimental to my children's mental health? I should not have been put in this situation. Ken has lied and broke the law, has went against previous parenting plan, and has also deceived a guardian ad litem. He should not be rewarded, and my children and their safety should be the focus and priority. Thank you for your time. All right, thank you. Mr. Anschutz, do you want to uh, respond? Yes, um, I do go to uh, the IEP. I went yesterday. I had talked to Ms. Case, and I told her that I needed a separate IEP uh, meeting because I did not want to be in the same room as Melissa. And through Camden and his schooling, I, I and my fiance went to his class meeting also and for the kids, uh, Matthew failing school, he actually brought up one of the grades. He was failing before that, something about his mom switched him from Mark Morris to a RA Long for his computer class or whatever, and it messed everything up, so his grade had dropped. And for the, uh, the contempt uh, stuff, we were divorced, finalized, and parenting plan on May 17th. May 8th was Mother's Day, Camden's birthday, was the month before in April. And so it, it wasn't even finalized. Like none of this was even finalized. So it, it, I wasn't in contempt of anything at the time. And for Matthew, during the summer, he had a falling out because his cousin was staying here the night, or actually the week with us. And I grounded Matthew because he went fishing when we went out to go get breakfast and he doesn't know how to swim. So I said, he needed to get his butt back in the house. He's grounded. So he ended up calling his mom and his mom ended up calling her sister. She came over pounding on my door. I called the cops and she was removed from the premises, but she's not allowed to be on the premises of our uh, townhouse area. And let me see what else I got here. And for my record, I was 19 when I went to prison and I'm 38 now. And I haven't been in trouble since I was 25. And I I have not hit or touched Missy in over 15 years. And when I did do what I did when I was younger, is it was due to alcohol, but I have not had any type of problem like that whatsoever. Um, let's see. And I, I, I've never put hands on my kids. I don't know where she's getting that information. She was always around and we lived with her, her grandma for the four years before all this. There's an allegation that you moved the kids to the Kelso School District without oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It with um, Ms. Anschutz. Any yeah. comment on that? Yes, yes, I do have on this. So I on the text, it says, I, I see I bought all the kids their school stuff. And I said, okay, she said, I got Canton. She wrote, I got Camden registered for kindergarten drop off. I'm drop, we'll drop off his records school needs and she'd be ready to go and i said what school because i didn't know what school she was putting him in because he hadn't been in actual school she said mint valley and i said how is that going to work and it wasn't going to work so she said i had a meet and greet with the teacher so i went there to go meet and greet this teacher that she supposedly registered my youngest in i walked in she said before we get started he needs his birth certificate and shot records and i said well my ex-wife said that he was registered here and she said, no, he's not. He's appointed a teacher, but he's not registered. So I said, what do I do? And she says, well, you need to get his birth certificate and shot records. Well, Missy was in Vegas with her now boyfriend or fiance or whatever he is. And so I, there's no contacting her. She was gone. So I was like, well, I was like, so can I put him in a different school then? She's like, well, yeah, he's not even registered here. And I was like, okay. So I went to Lexington, talked to them had all that figured out, went and got his birth certificate from the state office and went and got a social security number and went and got a printout of his shot records from LCC from the previous preschool, brought those in, got them all signed up, which Missy failed to have him go to his first week of school 
even though she was supposedly living in Longview, which she wasn't at the time. So that that's how that carried out is that she didn't ask me to or discuss with me about him going to Mint Valley. So I took it. Well, she didn't actually register him, so I might as well just register him in something. We had a week until school started, and it was it was the following week would have been her week. So I was kind of in a panic mode. So I registered him in the school closest to me because I didn't know what, what she was doing because she was kind of jumping around guy to guy. So I was like, okay, I don't know if this girl's going to be actually here to take my kids to school. So I did go and register him into Lexington Elementary where he's been going for the past year, almost a year. Your Honor, and, um, oh. I would like to mention, I have a letter from Mint Valley Elementary and the guardian ad litem is in possession of this, of a letter welcoming Camden to kindergarten, showing that he was enrolled. And also Ken did not call me and I did not agree to Camden going to Kelso. I have provided text and evidence filed with the court showing that he, oh, by the way, Camden is enrolled here. Like, so he's just saying lies and it's not true. Your Honor, I'm reading off of the paper that she had submitted. It says right here, I got Camden, her writing, a registered in kindergarten will drop off his records at the school and we should be ready to go. She did not drop off any of that stuff. And that's when I asked, what school? And she said, Mint Valley. And I said, how is that going to work? I so how, how, uh, I just, I'm just trying to figure out how these are lies if I'm reading the paper that is right in front of me. Your Honor, I still had time to drop off his birth certificate and his shot records to the school as it was two weeks before school started. And I had plenty of time and he didn't even give me a chance to do anything. He just went, told the office that I was told from the secretary at Mint Valley that he had went in there, told the office he had 80% custody of the children and which was said in August, which that was not true also. When was it that he registered Camden and Kelso? He texted me three days before school started. School started, I do but believe, August 30th. And he had texted me August, I don't have okay. the date in front of me, but it was three days before school started telling me and informing me that Camden was going to Kelso and did not discuss with, with me. I'd like to hear from Ms. Fellows um, on this, please. Yes, Your Honor. Um, this case was there was mom's petition to modify that she did file in September um, and it was she had brought up all of these issues um, in her petition and the declarations um, requesting the adequate cause and relocation. Um, the court It was in front of you, Your Honor, on September 21st of 2022 um, regarding the adequate cause. Um, and you basically um, set it on the trial assignment docket. Um, so the relocation could be um, set for trial. Um, the trial was set for November 4th of 2022 in front of Judge Evans. <clears throat> Um, this guardian ad litem was present as well as the parents. Um, the court heard all of these issues um, that the mother is bringing up and um, denied her motion to relocate with the children. Um, so, the, and that the parenting plan from May of 2022 was to be followed. Um, at that point in time, um, mom <clears throat> was working in Vancouver and and then from that point on, um, there were concerns that I had as the guardian ad litem about Camden going to school um, and mom not getting him to school. And so that's why um, I noted it up to bring it back before the court in December and um, brought, let the court know what my concerns were that she was not getting him to school on her weeks because it's a week on week off. Um, 
And then that's why um, the court then decided after hearing from both sides and myself is that the dad was supposed then to be the primary parent. Yes, I do know about the criminal history of the father. I have all the information as mom has said. Um, but at that point in time, my major issue um, that I tried to address with the mom um, prior to the court hearing, letting her know that I was bringing it back before the court, um, she still didn't get cammed into school in those couple of weeks before the court hearing. Um, I understand that she's frustrated and she's upset and things like that, but this has been heard by the court. Um, and here we are, we're here today. Your Honor, I also would like to mention that the court dates that were mentioned in the trial that we had, we only reviewed the intent to move with children. We did not bring up the custody issue that I filed for full custody. The trial was only for the um, intent to move. And I filed for both of those at the same time. Ms. Fellows, has anything happened since, I think it's December 15th when I entered an order um, transferring primary custody to the father. Um, has anything happened since then that would, um, where you would recommend a different course at this time? No, Your Honor. I did do a random drop-in visit at the mother's uh, when the kiddos were there. Um, so I was able to see, you know, what mom's household looks like and things like that. Um, and it was appropriate. I didn't have any concerns about mom's household. Um, but at this point in time, she's still working in Vancouver. Um, I know the court in December um, had wanted to increase mom's time. However, the issue still remain is that she's working in Vancouver and being able to transport and get the kids to school. Um, that issue still remains. And so at this point in time, I'm not recommending a change in the primary custody. I am recommending that the kids get transferred to Kelso um, since mom is now established in Vancouver, it would make more sense that they get moved to Kelso. Um, they want to be there. The kids have said, and I have not heard anything from them about wanting to change to moms. Um, and so that's my recommendation. I know that Hannah is extremely anxious to be able to change schools. She wants to start basically, she just doesn't want to be at Mount Solo anymore. She wants to kind of start new and start fresh. Um, so I know that she's really anxious to do that. But I did let dad know that he needed to hold off until we were back in front of the court for a review before he do that. Your Honor, I... Yes, I work in Vancouver, but I, my hours, I only work 10 hours a week and I am able to pick, drop the kids off, pick the kids up, be there when they get out of school. And a lot of what is being said is their dad manipulating the children. And what I can say to that, Your Honor, is that I have had discussions with the children, uh, both Matthew and Hannah at school, random, no, but no, neither parent knew that I was going to do that or when I was going to do that. Um, I have had discussions with them at their respective parents' homes as well. Um, and they have maintained the same wants that they want to be with their dad. Yeah. All right, on the uh, motion for contempt, um, What's cited in the motion is uh, our events that occurred on June 1, 2022, September 4, 2022, April 15, 2022, May 8, 2022. And so all of those occurred uh, prior to both the motion to relocate, which was heard in November, 
and also my order in, on December 15th, changing primary custody. Um, and as um, Ms. Fellows has indicated, these issues had been previously brought before the court. And so um, as to the motion for contempt, I'm gonna deny that motion. Secondly, um, based on Ms. Fellow's recommendation, I'll allow the children to be moved to the Kelso School District in whatever respective school there is. I would like to consider um, providing more visitation time to Ms. Anschutz. Uh, right now, I believe it's um, um, the weekend. I, let me just go to my order and confirm what I wrote. Yeah, it's every other weekend from Friday at seven to Sunday at five. Uh, if, if that can be expanded, I'd like to consider that. I think um, we need to, we're gonna come back on February 22nd on the child support issue. I would like Ms. Anschutz to provide a declaration and a proposal as to how the court can expand her visitation time uh, that we can consider on February 22nd. Uh, provide a copy to Ms. Fellows, provide a copy to Mr. Anschutz. And so that's gonna be my uh, decision today. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Your Honor, I, there's, with your decision, I would like to request to change the pickup drop-off location from Longview and be moved to the Woodland Walmart as it's in the middle uh, between their father and me, and it would be more fair. And I also would like to bring up as we had split custody for 2022, I would like to claim at least one of the children on taxes for 2022. Okay. So um, what was before me today was both the child support and the contempt order. Um, I want those issues put over to the 22nd. So the drop-off will stay the same until then. If we want a different drop-off, I want Mr. Anschutz to have adequate time to respond to that request. Also, um, to the issue of, of how the tax exemptions will be handled, okay? So we'll, we'll deal with that on February 22nd. Uh, Your Honor, <laughs> in uh, the uh, divorce papers, it says uh, for the 2022 uh, taxes is that I claimed all three kids, and I, was, I already based that off of that because I didn't know that was going to be an issue today, and I've already filed my taxes. Um, okay. Well, Your Honor, may I bring up? I looked through our parenting plan and our divorce papers, and I cannot find where it says that. So, if he has the proof saying that, I would like to see that. Okay. Yeah. So, page six, um, or page six of eleven. Uh, is that eight or nine? Nine down below. It says switch off every year of the year, beginning of 2022. Ken claims all three children: Matthew, Hannah, and Camden. Right. Um, both and shuts. We're, I'm not going to address this today. We'll address it on the 22nd. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Both. Thank you. Ms. Vaughn is here. Ms. Fellow. Somebody's got um, some background. Noise. All right, I'm here to review um, how the visitation has been going. Mr. Uh, Kiyoshi filed just a moment. I have a note that I need to put in. I haven't started completely yet. <laughs> Mr. Kiyoshi uh, filed a declaration. And um, Ms. Vaughn, did you have a chance to see that? No, I was not served a copy of that. And I don't believe Beth was either. I was not either. 
No, I filed that last night, yesterday. I'm off Tuesdays and Wednesdays, so I try to... Can you can you speak up a little bit? You're coming through a little light. Yeah, I filed it yesterday. I tried to get paperwork done on my off time, and that's when I could do it, and that's why they don't have it. They'll get it in the mail, though. Okay. Well, let me let me check in with the parties and have a, the visitation going. I'll start with Ms. Vaughn. Um, okay, so a few things have changed since the last time that we met. He has supposed to be making two virtual visits a week and then the potential for in-person supervised visits once every other week for two hours. That's what our order says. So since our last meeting, he has made four calls in total. Um, he requested one and then he did not call after I confirmed that it would be doable and that was on the 9th. He then called the 10th for about 10 minutes and the 11th he called for about half an hour and during that time he was playing with a dog, he was checking other apps on his phone, he was pretty distracted I would say for that half an hour call. And then he called again on the 23rd and that was a five minute call to which he ended saying he needed to head to work. And then he called the 24th for, again, about 13 minutes is I think what the call was. And he and he seemed off during that call, like he maybe wasn't feeling well. I'm not really sure. He was laying in a bed, just kind of like seemed, I don't know, just off, I suppose. And he ended the call at 4.18, saying that he needed to head to his treatment group. Um, and then I was informed that he actually did not show up to that group meeting at five at all. So he has not been in compliance with his AA treatments. Um, he's even, he hasn't done, so a little bit of backtrack slightly. So when he was given the in-person supervised visits, it was under the impression that he was in compliance with his treatment, which is a requirement of a weekly group session, and then two AA meetings outside of that. So we were, me and Beth both were under the impression that he was in compliance. And then further investigation revealed that he actually has not attended a single AA meeting since the beginning of treatment. So he has not seen Corey because our order states that he is not to get in person without being in compliance with treatment. So he now has not seen Corey for almost two months. And even the three times he did get to see Corey, he technically should not have been allowed to see him. Um, you also put in there last hearing that he was supposed to get a DV assessment done with collateral input. And as far as both myself and Beth are knowing, he has not done that either. Um, so he hasn't been making the proper times, quality, or number of calls, he hasn't done any in-persons, he's not in compliance with AA, and he's not in compliance with that DV evaluation. So kind of at this point in time, there's really not much to update on. It's mostly just letting you know that nothing is really being done and he's very inconsistent. All right, thank you. Mr. Kiyoshi? Yes. Um so I did submit a declaration yesterday, which I will read and they will get in the mail, but I will read it just so they know what I wrote so they can hear it for this hearing. So, <clears throat> and it's a, it's a lot for me to try and get out without having it written down. So I'm gonna read it out to, so everybody can hear and then you guys can talk after I'm done and I say my piece. <clears throat> I said, I am disheartened by the one fact Everything I've done for our son has only further pushed me away from him. I feel that my character has been uh, dragged through the mud. I've stated that since I separated from Corey's mother, Alexandria, I have grown for the better. I've stopped drinking and started going to church. The whole time in Colorado, I reached out almost once a day to FaceTime Corey. It was never a problem. Now she's manipulated my character and I get at least 30 minutes over video twice a week. That's an hour every seven days. Also, since the first day of court, the quality of these FaceTimes has not been good and I have repeatedly stated that in court. 
I am overlooked as a father wanting to spend real quality time with his, with his son. Again, I am being judged solely off what she has said and whoever will listen to her. Uh, whoever will listen to her of her hard past, which I'm not disregarding, but I am done with her using her past traumas to raise Corey and blame me and control me. Alexandria and I were both asked to create environments where Corey and I could have more quality in our FaceTime, in our FaceTime visits, which is what she wanted. I didn't argue. Now I go, now I go into quiet rooms or places where it is only me and the camera with no distractions. Like I said in court, that is not reciprocated on her end. I cannot be asked to create a space away from my family and on her camera, the television's on, he's on his tablet. She's talking to her sister, walking around in the background. Multiple times I have video called. After setting up a time on our family wizard, she answers, gives the phone to Corey and says, talk to daddy. The phone always ends up on the floor and I'm looking at the ceiling or the screen is pitch black and I'm calling for Corey to pick up the phone so I can see him. Alexandra only tells her side of the story in court. She does not care for my relationship with my son and that doesn't bother me. What bothers me is the fact that she pretends to care about my relationship with our son in front of the court and manipulates the story to show that I'm not putting enough effort when I actually am. There is no point to there's no point to be on a video call with Corey if the quality isn't there and we're not interacting. I have emailed Beth Fellows after one of the FaceTimes with my concerns about it. And she said nothing on the matter. She didn't even say anything about it in our last court hearing. I do not, I did not go silent on her. I did email her after that interaction on FaceTime and got nothing. Again, that does not bother me. I am more bothered at the fact that she pretends to care when she does not. For that, I have concerns about Beth Fellows uh, working this case. I have always been a great father and never have I been a threat to my son or Alexandria. You granted physical visitations one hour every two weeks. That's two hours every month. That's what it would have been, two hours every month. After the first physical visit with Corey, which went great, Barbara was the supervi was supervising that visit. She wanted to move it to two hours after only one visit, and it happened. That should show I do have a great relationship with my son. He ran and hugged me on the first visit. The last court hearing, Beth Bellow said nothing about my visitations with Corey and did not say anything in court about Barbara's thoughts on my interactions with my son which is what this is all about, my relationship with my son. This is another concern I have with her involvement and commitment to this case as GAO. Alexandria even said that he had a meltdown on one of our FaceTimes because I hung up. I hung up because uh, I'm, I'm at that time. I'm, I wasn't trying to go further into anything from what you wanted us to do. Again, that should show something of a, about the relationship I have with my own son, a great relationship that needs to be maintained and built on. But Alexandria says about that is, uh, is that I hung up on my son when he walked, uh, he wants to talk longer. Again, she is trying to paint a bad image of me and I've had enough. It is clear Corey's best interest is not her main focus. Since the last hearing, the beginning of January, I have tried to schedule days to FaceTime Corey. Alexandria works three days out of the week. She is off Saturday and Tuesday. I have informed her that since she was off Saturday and Monday, I could make those uh, work for FaceTime calls. She said those days don't work for her. I have two days off, Tuesday and Wednesday. Tuesdays are group meetings for me. Wednesdays are when I plan to have physical visits with Corey. I know she is trying to be difficult and wants me to do things her way in in that she can control me i knew this would be a problem again she's again she says we can communicate and schedule times for corey but this only makes it easier for her to push what she wants i feel it would have been better for the court to set a time that would best fit my schedule and hers with compromise on both ends it causes less friction 
I have missed his second birthday, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. I will not sit and allow myself to be dismissed as a father and mischaracterized as a person. Nobody should work this hard to spend time with their child. I will not continue to do what I am told to get validation from people who know nothing about me other than what Alexandria has stated about me. It's, de it's degrading to me that I know that I now have to prove myself worthy of raising my own child. To people that have never seen for themselves my interactions with my son and are basing my fatherhood off what a woman thinks I should be as a father. I have never had any issues until I married, I married Alexandria and I'm not blaming her. I understand I was moving too fast and I have stated this in court before. Though I will say that this is about me getting to raise my son as his father and so far I have just been jumping through hoops and Alexandria has continued to prolong me seeing my son. I continue to try and I would rather spend money to take my son somewhere than pay for classes I know I don't need. I have been going to the weekly group meetings and I want to make it clear that I don't need these classes. I quit drinking months before. I quit, I quit drinking months before I, told, uh, I was told to seek treatment. This was another way for Alexandria to try and control me. I, I won't have it anymore. I'm clearly seen as a second class citizen in this case. This is not even, this is not giving up on my son. I am standing up because I have had enough of, of people pretending to care for my relationship with my son. Too much time has been wasted. I will not waste any more time and money waiting for people's approval of my rights to be a father when their commitment to Corey's relationship with me as, a, as his father is clearly not priority. I will always love him. I will always love my son. I can't wait to spend time with him. I don't know when that time will be, but until then I will stay honest. I will stay an honest man to myself and others, content with the fact I did not give in to what people thought of me. I want to move forward and seeing as my relationship with my son is not priority to anyone but me. Now I want to focus on work and providing for my son with, with extra, un without, extra unnecessary bills. I would also like to focus on finalizing my divorce as soon as possible. I don't want my son growing up thinking I'm a threat to him or Alexandria. So I ask you to keep the protection order up for her and her alone. I understand we have a child together. We will be in communication about anything concerning Corey. Outside of that parameter, I will not talk to her and I will continue to stay away from her. All right, thank you, Mr. Kios. Yes, Your Honor. Um, <clears throat> the concern that I have is that the information that I have regarding the um, substance use and the DV, which is evaluations were recommended and the court did order those, those were directly from um, the packet that discharge packet that he got from the military, um, having those records and seeing why he was separated from the military solidified why I made those recommendations. Yes, the mom did um, have a lot of concerns, but having that information is what solidified that. Um, I would like to let the court know is that the father is not in compliance with his substance use treatment. He did get changed over to Tuesday groups from 5 to 6.30 p.m. His first Tuesday group was supposed to be the 17th. He did make that one. He did not make the one on the 24th. However, he was excused because he did call in. So he did make contact. He was supposed to have group last night. Um, I did talk to um, the counselor and he left me voicemail last night after the group and said that um, Mr. Kiyoshi was a no call, no show. Um, so that is of concern. Um, when I talked to the counselor earlier yesterday, um, asking about the NAAA slips, um, that he has not still, even though um, it was brought to his attention and that he was told that he needed to do those, 
um, starting in January. Um, he was actually supposed to be doing those from the very beginning, um, but he still has not, not complied with that. Uh, um, the counselor said there is nothing listed in um, their um, computer system at all. Um, so that is indeed very concerning. Um, and the DV evaluation I did um, basically Google just try to find a DV agency um, that could do the evaluation up in the Olympia area. I did find one um, and I also called um, where Mr. Kiyoshi goes to treatment, Northwest, Northwest Resources to see what they recommended and it was the same agency. Um, and so I gave that information to uh, Mr. Kiyoshi and I don't know, it sounds like he hasn't followed through with that. Um, it is concerning that the video visits haven't been consistent. Um, he had yesterday off um, and per our family wizard, which I do have access to, um, he did not make contact with the mom to request any kind of video visit. Um, so that's on him. Um, it's on him that he didn't follow through with contacting group or going to group. That's on him. It's on him regarding the AANA. Um, so at this point, it's basically status quo. Um, I understand that he feels like he's being picked on or what have you, but the fact is, is that we have information directly from the military about why he was separated. Um, substance use was an issue and DV was an issue. And so to address those and have the evaluations, which he did the substance use one, and he was recommended for treatment. Um, he says he doesn't have a problem. Well, the evaluation says otherwise. Um, and the fact that he doesn't recognize it is a concern. Um, so at this point in time, status quo. I do agree um, with Mr. Kiyoshi that there should be more of a schedule for the um, video visits. Um, I believe that it would be more beneficial if like he were to contact the mom at least 24 hours prior to when he wanted wants to have a video visit. Tuesdays seem to be a common day um, that they both can do it. So a Tuesday at whatever time, but I believe that there should be some kind of schedule, like at least advance notice 24 hours prior. Um, and if he doesn't make any request by say five o'clock on the Monday prior, um, is that there is no video visit. Um, so those are my concerns, Your Honor. All right, thank you. I normally would give um, everybody more time to respond, but I'm already about a half hour over on this docket and I have to go to another one. Uh, and I've got one more matter. Um, so I want to uh, say that I understand Mr. Kiyoshi's concerns, um, but from the beginning of this case, there's been objective um, concerns uh, regarding domestic violence and, and alcohol use um, because of the um, actions taken by the military. And so the orders I've made have um, been trying to um, encourage treatment for that and also get the appropriate evaluations. Ultimately, I want Mr. Kiyoshi to have a um, frequent and loving relationship with his son. Um, but the court's interest is to make sure that um, children that, that I see, that I learn about, um, are, are safe. Um, and Mr. Kiyoshi, uh, I will say, has been asked to do a lot more than a lot of um, fathers um, are asked to do. And, and he, uh, at least uh, it, it appeared up until today that, that he was um, following through on what we asked. 
Um, the concern today is that you, you may not be attending the meetings or following through with your treatment. And uh, I particularly was hoping that we'd have the domestic violence evaluation completed by today, but we don't. Um, so the, the one thing I wanna focus on as quickly as we can is um, I'd like to pick one time during the week, which will be a cast in stone. This is when you do a video visit with your son, okay? So Mr. Kiyoshi, you know what your schedule is. What would you recommend as that time? Wednesday, Wednesday would work, but not until she's off work. I'm sorry, you came through really light. I think I heard Wednesday. Wednesday would work, but she's working until four. So I, I guess Tuesday. I, I, I do have more points I wanted to bring up, so. Uh I understand, and I'm I, again, given my time, I'm not sure that I'm able to address those today. Um, I want to get past this um, video visit time. What what time on Tuesday works for you? I'm off Tuesday. She's off Tuesday, so noon, one o'clock would work. Ms. Vaughn, you're off Tuesday at some point. So um, he mentioned the visitation thing, how he wanted it to be um, Saturdays and Wednesdays. Um, Beth has seen our chats back and forth. I've been in great communication with her about that. And from the beginning of this case to now, it's always been him picking and choosing and me bending to that. Otherwise he doesn't make these calls for our son. So I feel like um, him continuing to get to pick and choose isn't him fitting into his child's schedule. It's him trying to force his child to fit into his. And that's not really how the reintegration needs to go. Um, I told him Saturdays were not good for me. I agreed to Wednesdays. Um, I also told him in counter to Saturday that I would be okay with doing Sundays before he needed to go to work. But he said church is more important than calling his son. So that's where our difference is. He keeps pushing Saturdays and Wednesdays, which are a day that I'm busy and a day that I work. And then I keep saying Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Those are the three that I can make happen easily because I'm off those three days and I don't have obligations. Monday, Ma'am, we're focusing on Tuesday. What time on Tuesday works for you? I have an appointment reoccurring every Tuesday. I have therapy and I can't guarantee, but it's either 9 to 10, 10 to 11, or 1 to 2. So I don't have a set Tuesday until after after Corey's nap, essentially, which is roughly 5 p.m., I was already accommodating my appointments on Tuesdays to try to fit in in-person visits, but again, he hasn't done any of those. So I just keep rearranging our schedules to try to make it work for him. And I have responded to every single text he's ever sent me within like an hour. Know, so that doesn't change when Mr. Kiyoshi can call. Um, so my appointments are booked three weeks in advance. If he asks me for a time, I, I'm still I willing to do two. A negotiation on this every week because I think I, that's I, I, I think he needs more. If he's given free will, he just doesn't do it. So I do want more structure. Hundred percent. Testing my patience. Okay, let me go to you. You tell me a date certain when Mr. Kiyoshi can call his son. My offering was going to be Sunday at 11 a.m. and also Wednesday at 6 p.m. I was going to still want two calls a week. Mr. Kiyoshi, do either of those work for you? Yes, I'll, let me write that. Let me write that. I'll make, I'll make it work. I have church on Sunday. Tell me which of those two dates works for you. Wednesday. All right, Wednesday at 6 p.m. That works. Every week, Mr. Kiyoshi, you will initiate a call and you will spend time talking to your son. That's a, either a call or a video. Ms. Vaughn, you will make your son available with no distractions to talk to his dad. Yep. Okay. All right, that's the only decision I'm gonna to make today. Everything else stays the same. Um, 
I'm going to put this over three weeks. Mr. Kiyoshi, I want you to at least schedule a domestic violence evaluation by that time. And I want to know that you've been in compliance with your substance abuse treatment. Yes, sir. So that we're going to be back here on February 22nd. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Your Honor. Sorry. I've got a lot more people here that is interesting. I'm Mr. Christinger. I believe this is on for the issue of increased visitation. Um, Judge Evans, we were before Judge Evans November 30th of 2022. Right. And um, to keep it short and sweet, because um, I know you're limited on time, is um, at this point, I'm recommending status quo. It seems like it's going well. Um, the dad has recently moved to a new house and I have yet to go do a home visit. Um, but by all accounts and purposes, um, it looks, seems like things are going well. Okay. Ms. King, uh, Things going well from your perspective? I would say the visitation is going well. However, I do have some slight concerns. Um, on top, I I respect Miss Fellows doing her job as guardian at Lightem. However, she has not conducted, I feel that, um, interviews at all in our court case. Um, I've seen her once I've talked to her maybe two or three times. Um, and I have concerns about um, Tegan as well. Um, the abrupt move that I had no notice of, and it was very quick for him and his um, girlfriend to move into this home together. Um, I also have concerns with him going to his sister's house where we have discussed previously in this case that he should not be bringing our son to considering they smoke marijuana in the house um, around their children and our own child. Um, there's also concerns about the yelling in that home. And that was brought up when we had our previous guardian ad litem and was completely dismissed. So I do have valid concerns about this. And we were talking about increasing visitation, which I would feel like now would be a time to discuss switching back to the primary custodian or going to a 50-50 schedule, but this has been going on for five months. I lost custody due to a false CPS report that was found unfounded. I'm aware of that. Mr. Uh, Chris and Jeremy, um comment as to how the visitations have been going. Uh, the visitations have been going really good. Um, Everything has been great. He's growing well, doing good. He's happy boy. Haven't had any more issues or any more incidents. Um, as far as the, as far as what she's saying, I, I, I understand, but uh, everything has been going a lot smoother since he's been in my care. There hasn't been any issues. Um, I thought that we were at a pretty good understanding. I know that she wanted more time with him. We were talking over the parenting app. And so I was going to suggest to her that maybe um, she that we do a, a later pickup on Saturdays, like 4 p.m. rather than in the morning so that she had the day with him on Saturdays also. That way she had that extra time that she wants because I know she's looking to get more time with him. And I totally understand that. Um, but also the as far as the you know four overnights on my end go, it's better for him to be here, I feel like, because it's. It's safe. It's secure. He's getting used to it. He's his sleeping patterns. We're getting things going here, and we're. It's just kind of getting scheduled, and I'd like to keep it that way so he can get again a good routine, and not mess it up at this point. Um, also, as as far as my sister's house goes, it's uh the guardian Ludum has gone over to that house, and she has verified and made sure that house is okay. This they do have a smoking room where they smoke marijuana, but is it is a smoking room? It's not in the house it's in the room that's attached to the house but it's a garage that's off the other side where no smoke comes in there's a, a whole three doors in between so 
Um, it's completely safe. And as far as the yelling goes, I, I totally understand where she comes from. Yelling is ridiculous. And we're not there that often is the fact of the matter because, you know, my sister is loud. But he also comes from a black family and my whole family is very loud and rambunctious and he is used to it. So it's not anything violent. It's just loud people being around him. Simple as that. Your Honor. And do you go to your sister's house? Uh, maybe once or twice a week just to visit to, to see how they're doing. We don't do overnights there anymore since we have our apartment now. We don't um, we don't stay there for long hours anymore or anything like that. But like I said, the Guardian Lineham has approved and seen this place and it's perfectly fine and equipped for him to be at as is. Your Honor, if I may. Uh, briefly, yes. Um, I have seen multiple pictures within the last week of them being there at least three times this week. And the guardian at Lightham has not viewed their apartment. There is no way for her or me to deem that it is safe or accommodable for our, our son. It is, they just moved. We don't know what they're settled in, what his sleeping arrangements look like, or anything like that. That can absolutely get remedied also. I, I, whenever the guardian Lightham would like to come up, stop by. Also, if you want to get, drop their straining order, you're welcome to come by too, Haley. There is also, just to let the court know really quickly, is that I am the guardian ad litem on the older child of the mother. And I recently gotten the um, intake packets back from both of those parents and read the guardian ad litem, prior guardian ad litem report on that case. And so it's kind of all kind of together. And so I'm not wanting to really make any other changes until I, I do a more investigation on that case because it could make changes or change my focus on this case. I agree. What I was um, thinking of doing in terms of expanding the time was on the first, third, and if there's a fifth weekend, but first, third, and fifth weekend, um, have the visits go to Sunday at 10 rather than Saturday at 10. That would give an additional night, three, two to three times a month. Mr. Christinger, what, what would be your thought on that? Sorry, um, I'm, that's totally fine to me. Um, maybe one or two rather than three a month to start with. Maybe until well, it's, not gonna be, it's only three like on four. the fifth. So like in April, there's um, three, there's five weekends. Well, I guess we got to pick what day. Like Let's every other weekend? The fifth, fifth weekend based on Friday. So March, there's five Fridays. So that would be, uh, that would be a five, you know, three week, three weekend month. There's only about, three of those a year. Okay. Okay. Would Haley rather do that than extend, than extend Saturdays to 4 p.m. instead of in the morning? And that's, that's fine, Your Honor. Would that start this weekend? That would start this weekend. So this weekend we would go Friday, I'm sorry, Wednesday to Sunday at 10. So I'd still be picking about 10 o'clock in the, in the morning. Then, but Sunday. Yeah, Sunday at 10. And then I guess it goes Wednesday to Saturday and then Wednesday to Sunday, Wednesday to Saturday. Like that. I, if, I, if I'm going to add some time, I think I want to add a night. I mean, it seems that is kind of a critical time. All right, I wanna make a, a two more orders. Uh, if you go over your sister's house, um, I want there to be no smoking while you're there, even though there's a separate room. No, nobody there can smoke marijuana. Um, and uh, no yelling, let everybody know, no yelling. And I guess the third uh, request is I'd like the guardian ad litem to do an inspection of that house. So Mr. Christinger, make that available to the guardian ad litem. Okay. Okay. Um, let's come back on March 1st. 
and see how that new visitation plan's been going. I want to hear uh, some additional information about the sister's house. Um, uh, and, and we'll see where we're at at that time, okay? All right. All right. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Thank you.